Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled Marpi, Sarpi, Sense and Nonsense. This was an excellent and inspiring lecture given by the great Bjorn Ludwig. And he explored mini screw assisted rapid palatal expansion and surgical assisted rapid palatal expansion. This follows on really nicely from the lecture we covered a few weeks ago by Akumal Huwezi, who introduced the topic. This time Bjorn delved deeper. He looked into how the appliance exactly works. He looked at design aspects and issues with it and concluded with his clinical protocol. Just as a recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and the orthodontics and summary team it may not be 100% representative of the initial lecture, although we try our best to ensure that it is. So the, back to the lecture. The effects of MARPI. Well, we get more parallel expansion taking place. With conventional RME, we get a pyramidal opening, more anterior, less posterior. But now we can put the differences quantitatively. So there's two millimeters greater expansion posteriorly with MARPI when compared to RME. And that was Cruci's study from 2019. There are facial changes that take place with MARPI. We get widening of the zygoma, widening of the nasal base, and we also get changes to the orbit. Now Bjorn used this as a warning to say that this is an appliance which is incredibly evasive. We need to bear that in mind. When it comes to looking at any expander, the two main side effects we want to consider are the periodontal effects. Do we get recession through this expansion, which have been shown not to take place with MARPI. However, evidence is currently limited. And also when it comes to dental tipping. So far, no significant effects have been found through the use of MARPI. That's Cannon's study from 2017. Why, how do we retain a patient after the use of MARPI? Well, Bjorn carried out a series of scans on his own patients and showed that actually at seven months, the suture still hasn't fully remodeled. So Bjorn advocated retention for at least one year following expansion. When it comes to the type of retainer, there's been some studies looking at the use of a TPA, a transpalatal arch. It was found actually when we carry out surgical expansion, a TPA doesn't really make any difference. That's Prada's study from 2014. So what does Bjorn do? Well, he uses a TPA but incorporates TADS into it. Bjorn's hypothesis is, is that it's bony relapse which is taking place. If we have a TPA with TADS, we'll prevent that process from occurring. Next, Bjorn described the controversy over expansion and changes to the airway, specifically when it comes to obstructive sleep apnea. Now, recently, the AJODO has released their white paper stating there's limited evidence for orthodontic involvement when it comes to expansion and the resolution to OSA. However, there has been some more recent research by Brunetto and Moon in 2022 stating it may well be effective. Bjorn's opinion on the matter is that it's an excellent side effect to get to treatment with expansion and MARPI, but should not be the main cause. Bjorn actually puts forward the main use of MARPI is when it, or the most effective way of using MARPI is for class three correction. We can get up to three millimeters of advancement of the maxilla using the alt ramek protocol. This is by Eric Liu in 2005. And it's essentially a series of expansion followed by constriction followed by the use of face mask as part of that process. When it comes to the difference of SARPI and MARPI, what we find with surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion, we tend to get less mid-facial changes taking place. Next, Bjorn went on to describe the different design features. And there is two main types of designs, that which involves being purely miniscule retained, and that which also involves having some arms extending to the first molars. Now Bjorn did experiment with both of these types of designs and found that when he does not have arms extending to the first molars, there is distal tipping that takes place of the screw itself. So now he advocates the use of arms going to the first molars. When it comes to the use of additional screws, whether it's four or six, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference to the expansion. The next thing to describe was the position of the screws. Generally screws are positioned, anti positioned anteriorly, but there is also the option to position screws posteriorly as well. And Bjorn spoke about the advantages and disadvantages of the two. The advantages of positioning the screws posteriorly, well, it stops the distal tipping taking place of the screw itself. Also, we can get bicortical plate engagement because the bone is thinner. That's one of the things that Moon advocates. The disadvantages are, though, by placing the screws posteriorly, the bone is much thinner, so any retention we get is relatively speaking limited. There's also a risk of going into the sinus. Now, for one or two millimeters, it doesn't make a difference as the sinus floor lifts up. However, if it's more significant, we can also get a perforation. 
So in Bjorn's opinion, having posterior tads placed is not effective when it is not required when it comes to the use of MARPI. Bjorn then spoke about MSC, which is Moon's maxillary skeletal expansion versus the use of MARPI in a more conventional sense. And Bjorn said the arguments are not as significant as the practicalities of the use of expansion, the types of mini screws used, the abutment of connecting the tads to the actual expander and the expansion screw type itself. Now Bjorn gave a great tip here, which I'm taking away even for the use of normal expansion when it comes to RME, is to have the lab open the screw five turns and then position it into the patient's model. The advantage this gives us is that chair side we can then expand or constrict to get it to fit because there is no process which is 100% precise when it comes to fabrication. The weakest point when it comes to the use of a MARPI design is the abutment, i.e. the area which connects the screw to the tads itself. The forces are significantly high when it comes to MARPI, up to one kilograms worth of force. So Bjorn recommends the use of laser welding, having a one piece creation made and therefore less likely to have any of these weaknesses exposed. That was Andre Walter's 2017 study which advocated it. Finally, Bjorn described how he plans his cases. Now it's very much a digital process for Bjorn. He starts off by assessing the ideal place to insert his mini screws. Once he's done that, he then digitally assembles the rest of the MARPI components. He puts on his power screw, he designs the arms for his MARPI. Now the advantage of having this digital process, it allows adaptation per patient. In one of Bjorn's own terms, he said it's pirate style. And I love this terminology of individualizing it per patient and digital allows him to be able to carry that out. When Bjorn delivers his MARPI, he carries it out in one appointment. He inserts the screws and the expander at the same time. Now Bjorn gave a tip here to always use floss around the expander. He's had two patients now who have swallowed the appliance, so please be warned. He then puts his fixation screws in, placing them very lightly into place. He also recommends when we activate the upper MARPI appliance to also bond up the lower appliances at the same time to decompensate so we know what to aim for for ideal occlusion at the end of our treatment. Now Bjorn's take home message, which I loved, is that nobody said it was going to be easy and orthodontics is not easy. A fantastic and inspiring lecture by the great Bjorn Ludwig. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.